as a recruit, you will undergo an initial training. Provided you attend it regularly, it will be about 13 to 16 weeks before you are officially enrolled and are allowed to wear the cap badge of the corps to which you are enrolled. The enrollment ceremony is very simple and is normally kept personal or at tr parade, sorry. Your unit commander will have invited your parents or guardians to be present and hopefully will have also have the unit padre to help you officiate the ceremony. This is in no way an event where all sundry attend and it is a lime milestone sorry, in your cadet career and serves as a reminder for the other cadets in your unit who will be present of their commitments to their unit and the Dominica Cadet Corps. We now pray the cadet prayer. O oh God, our Heavenly Father, who has brought us together as members of the Dominica Cadet Corps, help us to do our duty at all times and be loyal to each other. May all that is good and true prosper among us, strengthen us to defend the right, and bless our work that it may be acceptable to thee. Amen. These are, sir, the persons who wish to become full members of the Dominica Cadet Corps, attached with the Band Unit, Rosa Unit, and Portsmouth Unit, those of the NCS Unit, and the Isaiah Thomas Unit. Cadets, you have now been with us for five months. Have you hopefully, carefully considered what it means to be a cadet? Cadets, you have now been with us for five months. Have you carefully considered what it means to be a cadet? Cadets, have you now been with us for five months? Have you carefully considered what it means to be a cadet? Do you understand by joining this attachment, you are voluntarily joining a parade military youth organization and that while you are a member of it, you will be expected to serve it loyally and carry out obligations as a cadet? Yes, Say after me, I cadet, and insert your full name, I cadet, promise to honor my God, my queen, my queen and my country, and, my country. And, to and to do my best to serve them loyally, to serve them loyally. Honorably, honorably, at all times, times. through the unit of which I accompany in the Dominica Cadet Corps, to which I belong. Cadets, you are now enrolled. I am proud to give you the honor to wear the Dominica Cadet Corps badge. The present badge that we have replaced the badge that we had from 1910. And what you will see right now on your t-shirts is an uh, emblem resembling the Cicero parrot uh, surrounded by laurel leaves and that parrot is standing on two tools of trade, the spade and the axe. We all know in our traditions here in Dominica that kudme is something that has been there for centuries. And so these are the tools of trade that we portray on this new cadet badge. So you are now the proud members of the Dominica Cadet Corps who are authorized to carry this badge. <coughs> I welcome you to the Dominica Cadet Corps. We will always be ready to help you to keep the promise that you have just made. Thank you. Pleasant good morning to all of you. And for me, it's a pleasure and a privilege to be here as the Minister Responsible for Youth under which the Dominica Cadet Corps falls. I want to first of all commend all of you students 
for making up your mind to be part of this prestigious organization. I say prestigious because it is an organization that has made its mark in Dominica, an organization that we have seen from which um, leaders have been born and have continued to flourish in their leadership roles. I want to say it's an organization of social, but most importantly, disciplinary um, um, attributes. Um, while you are a member of, a card, of the Cadet Corps, I want to e implore all of you to take your enrollment very seriously. Coming out of the Cadet Corps, we expect to see leaders in our community. Do not think you are too small, even if you have not been fully enrolled, to be a leader. You can be a leader in any sphere of your life and at any stage of your development. And we expect to see positive leadership coming out of the Cadet Corps. We have seen it, and I think this is something, this is, this is a legacy that we want to see continue, leaders coming out from the Cadet Corps. And very often I say sometimes with the police force, with the nursing profession, sometimes as soon as you see a police, you see a nurse, you can say just by their look that this person belongs to the police force or this person belongs to the, the nursing profession. And so I want to be able to see the very same thing from the cadet core, that when they see you, your behavior, your attitude, the level of discipline, the level of respect, your civic responsibility being taken seriously, it means that therefore they can, they can make that association with this individual and the cadet core. I want to commend the many cadet, cadet, cadet members who very often will show respect to authority and that I can I can vouch for and I want to commend all of you who have continued to demonstrate your civic responsibility in times of need. I want to particularly mention post Maria when many of our cadets were in the forefront giving service relentlessly to those who were affected. I really want to commend and ask all of us to applaud them for the tremendous work that they did. Having had meetings with, your, with the Central Committee members individually, I understand the plight that the cadet core, the unit, and everybody seem to be going through. And as I make my inspection, I made some observations that I will sit and discuss with them. And as the minister responsible for youth, I will endeavor as much as possible to address some of the things my observations bring to the fore and some of the things that the cadet um, Central Committee will also discuss with me. To the cadets from the Grand Bay, from the Pierre Charles Secondary School, I want to continue to pledge the support of the Pierre Charles Foundation, who we have made a, a, a pledge to continue to assist with your uniforms and with your training. And I want to make that pledge this morning that we will assist with your uniforms on, up to the time of, in preparation for 3rd November's um, um, parade. So we will, I am hoping as soon as I'm finished that I will meet your leader, who is Miss, R Miss um, Prosper, Miss Prosper. So we will discuss your uniform um, um, preparation for 3rd November activity. But I really want to close and just want to encourage you to continue in the vein that you started. I want to ask you to take the cadet course seriously. I want to commend the parents for allowing their children to be part of this organization and your support in molding these young individuals to become leaders of tomorrow is critical as we look at what is happening in our society presently. So I, want, I really want to commend you and pledge my full support as the parliamentary representative for the Grand Bay constituency to the unit in Grand Bay and also as the minister responsible for youth to the cadet core nationally. So may God continue to bless you and I pray that we have a successful day. Thank you very much. I wish to thank you, my officers and cadets, for providing me with my first official commandant's parade. In 2000 and I believe one, I was at the ground floor of police headquarters when I was approached by our former commandant, Colonel David Andrew. At that time, he was a police inspector. He met me 
and he said, Constable Raymond, I just came from a meeting with the chief of police. You are now volunteered to be an officer in the cadet corps. You are to report to the Dominica Government School on Thursday at 3 p.m. I said, yes, sir. And that was it. No questions was asked. Nothing else was said. And from, and from this time, I have been a member of the Dominica Cadet Corps. So this in synopsis is a brief as to how I got introduced into the Cadet Corps. As a youngster, I grew up in Boyd's Avenue in the 70s. I knew the Dominica Cadet Corps. I saw the cadets marching down Boyd's Avenue, going to police headquarters to collect the rifles and the drum corps, beating away playing music every week. And so it somewhat was embedded in me that cadeting had to be part of my future. And today I am proud to say that I'm a member, a proud member of the Dominica Cadet Corps. <clears throat> the Cadet Corps Act number two of 2001, which officially revived the cadet program, saw no partisan bickering in parliament because many parliamentarians on both sides of the aisle were all past cadets who were happy to ensure that our present generation and those who come have the benefit of this behavioral and skills program. And this is so true because in the 70s and beyond, and before that, all persons attending the Dominica Grammar School had to be cadets. I believe from third form was enter Dominica Grammar School and St. Mary's Academy, it was automatic that you had to be a cadet. Hence the reason why most of our former parliamentarians are, and present, so and present, were all cadets. The task of ensuring that this mandate is carried out to f has fallen squarely on the shoulders of a few men and women here today, some of whom are before you. Permit me to salute uh, the volunteers such as the commissioned and non-commissioned officers, the parents of cadets here today and those who were or who had uh, uh, children who were members of the Dominican Cadet Corps, the teachers of the various secondary schools, and we have a very small percentage of teachers who are right now members of the Dominican Cadet Corps. We'd like to see that increase. The community from which the cadets come from. I am very sure that you parents, teachers, and people of the communities presently presented, presented here would be, sorry, would have observed the tireless, tireless, tireless and unselfish effort of those officers at making things happen in the Dominica Cadet Corps. Today's activity is a clear manifestation of our commitment, patience, and hard work. Let me thank wholeheartedly everyone who has assisted them in one way or another. It is indeed a challenge to deliver the cadet program with limited finance and personnel that are available. However, with the continued support of the principals and staff of the uh, of secondary schools, the parents of the cadets, and the entire nation, we will succeed. As the negative forces of society continue relentlessly to claw at our youth, we the volunteers of the cadet corps resolve to forge ahead with this positive initiative. I am honestly not surprised at the progress of the Northeast Comprehensive Secondary School Cadet Unit, simply because of the unwavering support of the parents. <clears throat> Your Cadet Parents Association is a model worthy of emulating at all cadet units. Cadets, you and your parents have made a good choice to, to be part of this program. Be proud of yourselves.
continue to participate fully. Those who live with discipline as their watchword do better in life than those who don't. And in a while, you will hear a testimony from one of our former cadets who will tell you about cadet experiences that that individual had and where it brought that individual. Open your eyes, cadets, wide, and look at the world around you, and choose carefully the path you wish to walk. Listen carefully, and decide which voices should influence you. Ultimately, give yourself a chance to become a well-rounded, decent, and productive citizen. We are very proud of you, cadets, who, are, who have been enrolled today. Keep your flag or your cadet flag flying high. Be all that you can be. The cadet corps has participated in some regional activities such as the Caribbean Cadet Camp 2018, where cadets from all over the Caribbean met to do, to do joint and harmonious training to foster integration and develop their cadeting skills and forge long-lasting relationships. We had 17 persons representing the Dominica Cadet Corps at that event. This camp is held every two years in one of our sister islands. Now, the annual Cadet Commandants Conference was held in Barbados this year. It is held usual, usually in the host country of the Caribbean Cadet Camp. And this it coincided with the Caribbean or the um, Caribbean Cadet Camp in Barbados. Yours truly was given the privilege to award outstanding performers during the Cadet Camp in Barbados. And so some of these persons are right here in the rank and file on parade this morning. Last but not least, let me thank all you who made today's function possible. The Honorable, the Honorable Minister Justina Charles, Minister for Youth, Sports and Constituent, Constituency Empowerment. Our host, the principal of the Dominica Grammar School. The Parents Association, our sponsors, too numerous to mention at this time. Well wishers, officers, and cadets. I look forward to continued support as, we, as the Dominica Cadet Corps go from strength to strength. Thank you, Honorable Minister. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to inform you that I was given the privilege of leading a contingent of cadets to Barbados, to the Caribbean Cadet Camp. Today, we want to present them with their certificates and their Caribbean Cadet badges, which they will wear on their uniforms as persons who have attended the Caribbean Cadet Camp. At this point, I wish to invite the Honorable Minister to assist with the presentation. I'd first like to call Staff Sergeant Remitter Joseph. Sergeant Anthony Francis. Sergeant Ethan Yankee.
Corporal Remick Stevens. Corporal Mary Jean Louis, but she's not with us at this point. Lance Corporal Tarek Stewart. Stop! Get up! Lance Corporal Harold Julian. Yes, sir. How you pronounce that surname? Lance Corporal Cassian Yuseb. Lance Corporal Samuel Nixon. <laughs> Lance Corporal Kino Dossett. Lance Corporal Nathan Tulo. Lance Corporal Kelbert Joseph. Private Marian Joseph, uh, sorry, Alexander. No, yes, no. Alia Alexander. Private Karim Kazmi.
The second recipient, Adjutant Major Fitzroy Leon. The recipient of the third medal is Captain Eddie Henry. The fourth recipient is Captain Lincoln Robinson, who is absent, and Major Leon will accept on his behalf. Good morning. A cadet is expected to be three things. Immaculate, circumspect, and impeccable. These three words have been repeated so many times throughout my years as a member of the cadet corps. What does it mean to be immaculate, circumspect, and impeccable? It means your deportment must reflect that you are neat disciplined, organized, and a respectful young person. Your boots should be kept clean, polished, glazed to near perfection, if not perfection. Your uniforms well ironed and properly tucked in. Your demeanor must show that you have respect, confidence, and pride in who you are and what you represent. Do these things come overnight? Of course not. However, that is why an institution such as the Dominica Cadet Corps is established. The Cadet Corps teaches a young person like yourself to have confidence. And a young person who passes through the Dominica Cadet Corps must gain high level of confidence in him or herself. Believe in their ability to be resilient now, this word has been used a number of times over the course of the last 12 months. But what does it mean to us as cadets? It means that we must possess a resilient mind. A mind that has confidence in its ability to overcome challenges and a mind that is prepared to embrace new opportunities. The countless physical and mental challenges that you go through in the Cadet Corps leaves you with an I can conquer all things attitude. For example, this time last year, many of us may have been frantic. We lost our homes, our schools, some of us lost family members. Life as we knew it came to an abrupt halt. But I can almost guarantee you that there were some cadets sitting in what was left of their homes, looking up at roofless ceilings, already planning their next course of action. How can I get water to my home? How can I help feed my family? How can I get a shelter over my head? How can I help? These were questions that young cadets 
were familiar with long before the passage of any storm or any hurricane. The survival skills that we learned through this organization has made us fearless. The hikes, the camps, and the constant physical training prepared us to be ready for any and almost all occasions. A cadet is taught to survive. A cadet knows how to also recognize an opportunity and is prepared to embrace it. So yes, we looked at our roofless ceilings, the no electricity, the no water, and of course, the newly rugged or extra rugged terrain and said, I can get over this. For some of you, you got an opportunity to work, to show up and show your supervisors that you can manage under pressure, under less than ideal circumstances. And to some of you young cadets, you got a chance to go to school and show your teachers that despite your circumstances, that you could pass these tests and excel in these exams. You express the opportunity to go beyond your comfort zone, to operate, to function, and to survive. Now, this was evident in our results as a country in the CSEC examinations. These students were, on, were able to embrace the opportunities given to them. I want to say through the absence of social media, television, and other constant distractions of life, and were able to focus and trust in the process of overcoming. But the Cadet Corps goes beyond giving you confidence in yourself. The Cadet Corps helps you develop as a team. This Peter pay for Paul, the chain is as strong as its weakest link mentality, brings you very far in life. It teaches you to be a team player, to trust others, to work with others. It allows you to not only rely on your strengths, but also to embrace the strengths of your fellow teammates. It puts you in a position to encourage others, to demonstrate to your peers that they could be better versions of themselves. Now it's quite simple, really. The logic is you want to be the best and you do not want to falter. You do not want to be given push-ups because the person standing next to you falters. If my boots are clean, then the person next to me boots better be clean because I do not want to drop and give push-ups or run extra laps because they have dirty boots. It teaches you to be your brother's keeper. The Cadet Corps fosters brotherhood, sisterhood, and it also ensures that each person is held accountable for the other. So yes, the sun may be hot, but if you look to the left and you look to the right, you see your fellow cadet feeling a little off. You simply tap them and you encourage them and you said, this parade will soon be over. Hold it in. The Cadet Corps is one institution that ensures that you learn and you earn respect. You respect your seniors in the Corps and you must have respect for yourself as young adults. Now, young ladies, this is where I appeal to you in particular. Do not let the strains of physical activity shy you away from the Cadet Corps. Stand tall, have respect for yourself as a young woman and for the young woman you want to be. Demand respect among your peers and do not be afraid to protect yourself and demand respect from all of your supervisors. And I assure you, you carry yourself with that respect here. There is no place else, not at work, not at school, not at church, and not in the communities, that you will not demand and earn respect from others. When my younger sister wanted to join the Cadet Corps, I was, I had my fears, I was afraid as well. I was afraid of whether or not she could withstand the pressure. But I know what Cadet did for me as a young woman. I know how it molded me into the young woman I am today. So why would I not encourage another young lady to be a part of the Dominica Cadet Corps? The Cadet Corps teaches you to carry yourself with dignity. And on that note, I must encourage you to carry yourself with pride, 
take the cadet corps with you wherever you go. Expel the limited notions that cadet is all about marching and push-ups and standing at attention. The public does not know what the cadet has to offer. Therefore, I implore you to teach them, show them through your actions and attitude what the cadet corps really is and what the cadet corps is really made of. Remember as well, not everyone can withstand the pressure of being a cadet. So you know that puts you among the elite. We know the intense training that we are under. We know the skills that we learned. Show Dominica with confidence what it means to be a proud cadet. Now I am proud of my cadet experience. I joined when I was about only 12 years old, a young girl at the convent high school. I was faced with many challenges weekly, just like you are. And I asked myself, can I make that run? Could I actually do all those push-ups? Can I survive this gruesome hike? Well, clearly I did. So what that shows you? That shows you that you can. I learned the importance of keeping fit, staying healthy, learned archery and self-defense. But what I treasured the most from the Cadet Corps is what I was able to take with me now, even into my profession. My first official step to public speaking was taken with the Dominica Cadet Corps. A good bit of years back, my colleague, Mr. K. L. London, and myself were honored to represent Dominica in Barbados in the challenge camp. That was my first time representing my country in Dominica in debating. And of course, we won. The Cadet Corps fosters bonds that goes beyond the Cadet Corps. Persons like Craig Harris and Lincoln Rivera and Lovell Ravelle, among many, many others who I still see standing here before me, excel, each of them excelling in their own field, are still my persons I go to for advice. I came here to encourage the newly enrolled cadets to let them know that they are the future of this program to motivate them. However, the duty rests on us. And by us, I mean the more senior cadets, the officers, the teachers, the parents, and all persons associated with the cadet corps to remind you to ensure that the plan that we have for the development of the cadet corps is carried out, that any oversights or errors that we may have encountered in the past, we learn from them. That the cadet curriculum, the geography, the map reading, the survival skills, the physical training, the drills, of course, the recreation, all of these things are carried out through this new cadet year. It is our civic duty as seniors to secure these young cadets Ensure that they take with them into every other aspect of their lives experiences that cannot be matched by any other institution. These experiences and lessons may serve as a reminder to inspire them to grow, to become well-rounded, confident, respectful, and skilled young adults. I look out and I see persons like Training Officer Sherwin Mitchell, diligently leading the cadets on. It is an inspiration to all of us. Lastly, I want to mention to you cadets, the president is watching us. The honorable minister is watching us. The commandant has high expectations of you and is watching you. All of Dominica is now watching you. Take pride in yourself, in your decorum, in who you will be in the future because of the Cadet Corps. Take Cadet Corps with you. Thank you.